I'm Robert Scoble and I'm in a really special place in Silicon Valley where the mouse was invented and we're here to see uh, or hear the stories behind one of my uh, favorite apps of 2010 which is this uh, iPhone app called Siri, S-I-R-I and I'm sitting with some of the people behind this app. So, who are you? I'm uh, Gary Morgenthaler, general partner of Morgenthaler Ventures and we're one of the investors behind Siri. Um, and, uh, had the, had the pleasure of uh, being part of uh, that uh, great adventure and uh, watching you break the news about it. And I'm Norman Winarski. I'm uh, Vice President at SRI of Ventures and Licenses. And at SRI, we help create ventures, build them, uh, uh, develop them, and help them get invested. And so that was my role with Siri. And I'm uh, Sean Carolyn, Managing Director at Menlo Ventures. Menlo. Uh, has been around for a long time, 1976, investing our fund in looking for what we think are going to be market-leading opportunities. Uh, Siri was one we got very excited about right. uh, even before it was a company and decided to participate with all these guys to help build it. What, what gets the, to the to BC? What, get, what got you hot and bothered by this? I, I got hot and bothered by it too, and I, I wonder what, what you saw in this that said, man, this is a, a company we want to be a part of. Thank you. Take right? a first crack, yeah. So uh, we have this process, we call it SEM, Systematic Emerging Market Selection. And uh, I think in technology, you don't really know exactly where the next opportunity is going to come from. I think you make observations about what's going on, both in your own personal usage of technology, as well as traction you see inside your portfolio and you know conferences and things like that. And, uh, and this one, I think there were three different SEMs that came together, and I think a lot of the most disruptive companies come from uh, the convergence of different fields. One of them was natural language, uh, the, the ability to do natural language on the server side where you're not training a local uh, compute resource. You can go match against all these voices in the sky like it, it was really working yeah. for the first time where most of the time yeah, it was getting it right. It, you can use it to talk to the, you know, find me a taxi right. exactly. uh, at 8 p.m. tonight and it recognizes your voice and then it, it finds you the taxi. It store finds it. So Siri is primarily focused on helping users get things done. So it's closer to a do engine than a search engine, for example. Let me give you some examples of that. Get me a table for two at Left Bank in Menlo Park at six. So Siri figures out what you're trying to do, orchestrates web services on the back end, and makes it very simple to get directly to, to a transaction. So with one click, I have a reservation. I might need a ride to the uh, restaurant tonight. Send a taxi to my house at 5.30. So again, when you know what somebody's trying to do, it's easy to figure out who can help them do it. And, and interestingly, uh, if you say a longer query, it can be more accurate because even if one word is not recognized right, Siri has got the you know, sort of intelligent natural language processing and it can say, well, I heard restaurant and I heard Palo Alto and so do sort of a fuzzier match to get you to the right place. So it, it's intelli the intelligence of the system counteracted some of the inaccuracies in language recognition. Right. So that was one aspect. Another was a field called agents, where we were, uh, you know, one, I don't know if you guys saw, it was uh, this thing called Smarter Child <laughs> from many years ago. And it was this really dumb uh, chatterbot that you'd add as a buddy to your AOL and some messenger, and you'd say, you know, did my boyfriend, uh, cheat on me and uh, you know it would say I don't know but you know you really ought to look into that like just a bunch of kind of dumb canned phrases as dumb as it was it had 17 million users and a billion queries a month yeah. and so there was something you know you see that and even though I'm not in the target demographic you say like there's something here to agent um, like people just like to interact with agents so so that was the second and then the third was uh, you know sort of semantic <coughs> web, web services where you just saw more and more companies making the capabilities of their services available on the web via API, but in large part the APIs were not accessible by consumers. You know, they, you know, you have to go to the website, 
and Siri was the first uh, service that we came across that really used and orchestrated and came up with a really elegant way to present those to users. So, um, for for those who don't know the uh, Siri story, Siri ended up selling to Apple Computer probably for a future iPhone. You're, you guys aren't allowed to speculate on right. what Apple would, might do with it, but That's we can correct. talk about everything that led up to the decision of Apple buying you, right? right. No, no. Yeah. Anything else to add? Sure. On, like, <clears throat> no, I think Sean gave a very good uh, uh, overview and description. Uh, I would say only further that uh, our firm and we have been engaged with Norman and with SRI for more than a decade. Uh, we helped spin out uh, the Nuance uh, speech recognition system back in 19, late uh, 1990s, 1996, 97. And I worked with uh, Norman's uh, president and partner, Kurt Carlson, on the board. And Norman uh, collaborated as well in making Nuance the leading speech recognition engine and now company in the world. And um, <clears throat> from that experience, we and Norman came west from uh, Sarnoff Laboratories uh, to form, among other things, the Invention Incubator which hopefully you'll talk about here. Um, Siri is a spin out out of invention. And Siri, uh, as, as Sean described, Siri is bringing back together the pieces of artificial intelligence into a single platform. And uh, AI in the, it is a 50 year old discipline, yeah. which uh, was so hard and complicated that it broke into multiple subdisciplines, all of which in, proceeded independently. Uh, the original vision was that this was all one intelligence, and, a and SRI is stitching back together the pieces of artificial intelligence into a single experience. And what Siri, re Siri represents, I think, is the reintegration of those pieces, speech recognition, natural language understanding, dialogue management, intelligent agents, and the ability to maintain uh, an interactive conversation and to do what you're trying to accomplish. So it's a huge step forward. Uh, and it's a necessary step when you consider smartphones uh, are very difficult to type on, have small screens. So the interactions can't be like the interactions on the web. They have to be much more intelligent. And they have to get you directly to the service that you want to get to without all the intervening uh, clicks and without all the intervening web pages. People in the press have uh, pinned this as a, some sort of search engine, right? But Steve Jobs says it's not search, and that's not really why I wanted Siri. I wanted it for artificial intelligence. Can you dig into uh, a little bit more about what is artificial intelligence and how it works inside the Siri app? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so, so AI originally was conceived as the field that in which all the pieces of human intelligence could be emulated by a computer. And uh, from the original vision, there were centers of excellence at MIT, at Stanford, at Carnegie Mellon, elsewhere, that pursued those individual pieces. Um, those pieces are now coming to market in very useful forms. Speech recognition is getting, you know, has gone from poor to acceptable to good to is almost uncanny now. Yeah. I mean, the speech engines are really good in terms of recognizing uh, what you said, but not what you meant. And that's where natural language comes in, and that's where uh, so-called ontology modeling, understanding, knowledge representation and understanding. And what Siri does, based on research here at SRI, is to st stitch those pieces back into a single experience. And that's what's revolutionary, and that's what's so powerful. And I think this is going to be a defining technology for the coming decade in terms of how we interact collectively with in, with computers, particularly in a mobile context. Interesting. You have a really cool job. <laughs> <laughs> being, being at the place that invented the mouse. And, yeah. and give me a little history, because a lot of people, uh, they might have heard of SRI, but right. really, if you're not in the valley, you, even if you live in the valley, you really yeah. don't understand the importance of this place. Oh, yeah. Sitting in. yeah. So SRI is about uh, 65 years old now. Uh, started by Stanford University as a nonprofit, and uh, founded a Stanford Research Institute. And SRI's mission, uh, besides the health, peace, and prosperity of mankind, mm -hmm. was also to help create a commercial base in the Bay Area. It was always an international uh, uh, organization whose purpose is also to, unlike an educational institution, is to make 
a impact on the world. So education meaning people's purpose there is to is to improve people's knowledge. Yeah. Our purpose is to develop and deliver and deploy opportunities into the world. Which is why, even going back to the 1960s when Doug Engelbart did the famous demo. Right, the uh, mother of all demos. And you can find it on YouTube by yes. searching, I think, the mother of all demos on yes, YouTube. Yes, right? exactly. It's a, every entrepreneur should watch it because it's, yeah. it's, it is the, the tap root of how to do it. It demo. is probably <laughs> the only uh, demo that I've ever heard of for computer scientists, geeks, basically. Yeah. Including ourselves, that had a standing ovation. <laughs> wow! Where was that demo given, by the way? Where was it given? Was it given here on the campus or somewhere uh, else? I don't somewhere? remember. I, okay. I think part of it was given here. It was actually he worked. He worked just was, down the corridor from your yeah, office. Yeah, yeah. And I think they were connecting also to to various other organizations uh, as part of the demo. But he did that demo. Uh, the reason I uh, bring it up in the role of education, he did that demo to teach the world yeah. what computing would look like. This was 1967, and we didn't see a commercial product really that su right. succeeded until the Macintosh in 1984, right? right? Mm -hmm. right. So it was, a, it was a long time. <laughs> and in, that demo, in that demo, he, he had demonstrated uh, Windows, he demonstrated the mouse and pointing, he demonstrated uh, markup language in a sense of uh, uh, hypertext type yeah. clicking. Um, it was a, a graphical user interface. It was a tour de force. Yeah. yeah. Interestingly, I mean, the, the difference in time between the demo and the product in that case, in Siri, I think you can also say, you know, Hal 2000. I mean, that was the, the original pitch. So the three founders, Doug Kitless, uh, Adam Shire, and, and Tom Gruber, were all, you know, did amazing work, uh, came and the name of it was Hal. I mean, that was the first slide deck we it saw. Was. Uh, it had unfortunate other uh, right. <laughs> it's not turn evil on you. <laughs> turn evil on you. Yeah. And, uh, steal your children. Yeah, <laughs> and kill you, right. exactly. And uh, kill a few people on the way. But that, there was one. There was another one called the uh, Knowledge Navigator, right. which Apple put out a video, I think, in the '80s. Yes. And it was essentially this. I mean, essentially sitting down at an iPad. <laughs> you know, it was like a little yeah. thing, and talking to it. And the assistant said, "Oh, you know, your mom's birthday is coming up," and so. The, the vision of speaking to a computing device and having it do things for right. you has been around for a long time, and it's really the, you know the pieces coming together that has yeah. made it possible. But it's important what you you brought up about Doug Engelbart. I just I mean, that there's a profound reason why he's important to this conversation as yeah. well, which is Doug talked about assisting augmenting human intelligence, yeah. and that was his theme for his life. Is his theme? It still is. It today. still is today. His yeah. theme with his Bootstrap Institute. And the AI was originally uh, uh, broken into people's camps. Some people saying artificial intelligence, replace humans, do the analysis with, uh, with machines. And Doug saying, all, you know, get power tools to help humans and augment human intelligence. Now, they couldn't at the time, I think, have known what a Siri would do. But Siri is, in this case, a, a major force in the, in the trend of Doug Engelbart of power tools to, to augment human capabilities and intelligence. Mm -hmm. And so with that, I mean, um, I believe this is the first of real AI. This, yeah. is, this is where we, uh, we've heard, you know, hype. One of the things that these guys were always telling me from the first time we started shopping uh, Siri to them, our close friends, was, okay, well, AI has always been a promise, yeah. and everybody's always, you said your partners also talked to us about this. <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't use that word AI. <laughs> and don't use that word AI. And it's always 20 years from now, and it's always, uh, you know, never happening. So yeah. why now is what the, yeah. and so this is the real, this has happened, it's demonstrated to happen, yeah. and it's the beginning of a real revolution. Yeah. What was that pitch like? When, when they, tell me a little bit more about how the, these guys pitch you guys to get you hot and bothered. Can, can, get, I, can I take that one? <laughs> um, so, uh, Sean said it well. I think great companies are born of great people. And the team at Siri was astonishingly good. So, Doug Kitlaus, Adam Chire, Tom Gruber, um, and the team that they assembled. And Adam had his uh, list of top ten programmers yeah. in the world, and methodically he went through and recruited uh, almost all of them. So the team that was assembled at Siri was awesome, and the execution 
was as close to flawless a, as I've seen in my in 20 years of experience in the venture capital field. So uh, it was about the people, and we developed confidence early on in, in the team and people. In fact, we've known Adam for some years beforehand, and uh, Doug and uh, Tom immediately uh, uh, understood our issues, and, and along with Norman, iterated and responded so fast that we said, look, this is a team that we really have to pay attention to. Um, the initial demo talked about a vision of a handheld smartphone-based smart interactive agent that provided access to web services in a conversational matter, manner. The end product was shockingly close yeah. to the original vision. Yeah. Um, and and that's, that is to say that it was uh, it, if you looked at the original pitch and what was delivered to the market, it's you know surprisingly the same. I think surprising even to the team because yeah. I'm not <laughs> sure <laughs> they put out such a big vision that it's not clear to me that they, even they believed they could do it. So right. it was very impressive. They started with a vision and they executed brilliantly. Yeah. Tell I, me, can I add one thing to that? Because I think we're always looking to it. You know, who, who else might eat their lunch? Because we're starting <laughs> yeah. with three guys and they're really smart, but. Uh, you know, there are a couple other little companies out there called, you know, Google and Microsoft and Yahoo that are in the search game. And uh, and I think, at least for ourselves, what gave us confidence was when when companies take, like, an architectural departure from the status quo. I think of, like, Google PageRank versus statistical counting of pages that Yahoo and the other six search engines did. When Google showed up, you know, they used PageRank, which hardest human intelligence in the form of hyperlinks to improve their search results, which was just so different. If you believe in that thesis, you can win. And I think the, the architectural departure here was this active ontology, right. which SRI developed, which is not about crawling right. web pages and bringing you back links. It's about, okay, here's the 100 or 200 or 500 services I think this person might want when they're on the go. And here's a very long query and I need to figure out from this query what's the intent and how does it map across these services? How do I know this much about users to invoke those queries and get things done? And that's just, I mean, you know, the director of search, Peter Norvig, at Google has, has been quoted as kind of making fun of, of this approach. And, and that's the type of thing you like to see as an investor, that the big incumbents who could kill them are actually making fun of them. Because yeah. if it ends up working, <laughs> then they're ways behind. I want to add one, for the interest of people, you, you pointed out earlier you want to help people who want to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Doug was um, remarkable in his ability to not just put a presentation to venture capitalists together, but to put a presentation that brought to life the issues. So he brought to life with demos, and Adam and Tom, demos of this function working not something you could hand uh, somebody else, you needed a computer scientist to continue to, yeah. to hold it in their hand initially, but to begin. But the second thing he did was look at competition. And instead of just, you know, the, the standard chart where, you know, here's competition and down here is people that don't do well and you're in the upper right hand corner. Yeah. He would actually put together, a bring it to life example of let me show you if you do this query mm -hmm. with Siri. Let me show you if you do this query with Google, and so forth. And the query, you know, Google is a search engine, uh, world class, the best in the world, yeah. search engine, but this was a do engine. This wasn't bringing back links, this was doing the task for you. No, I, when I first saw it, that's what, what caught me as yeah. well. Yeah, um, if I can add one, one comment. <clears throat> so, on a desktop with a large screen, getting page ranked links back from a search engine is a reasonable way to go. You can navigate quickly, the pages come up quickly, you get a lot of information at a time, you can scan and sort through it. It's, a, it's sufficiently efficient that it's won over the world over the last decade. On a smartphone, with only your thumbs to type, and only a, you know, three, and a, three plus inches of screen real estate, you are so constrained that getting a million blue links back is not a, is not a good solution. Right. And so what you really want is you want the one answer to the question that you asked, or if you wanted to conduct a, an e-commerce kind of transaction and access a service, you'd like to get right to that service without going through all of the, the pages in between, which you would normally have to do through through e-commerce websites. So that's the that's the breakthrough at, at Siri, and 
that frankly requires AI technology. It requires the kind of technology that's here developed. I, I think um, when you guys first came in and showed it to me, you actually showed me the tool that hooks up the API, the, the APIs from uh, Siri into the APIs of the right. open table, mm -hmm. right. for instance. Right. Right. And that tool was really neat. Yeah. I, I've never seen that demoed in public, I don't think. But, but that, that tool and, that and you will n And you will likely never see it. <laughs> now, now you will never see it. That That's right. That, that well, was remarkable. Part of what was brilliant was to build, you know, the, the team really saw end to end uh, of a, an entire system for not just performing the integration of the user inter interface, but for the integration of the web services. And that side, they said, this has to be efficient because this has to scale. And there are some 3,000, you probably know better than I, 3,000 or so web services that have opened commercial APIs on the internet so that you can access services. Yeah. Um, and things, things like open table, exactly. Fan bingo, right. exactly. You know, all sorts of things, right? You know, programmable web, uh, right. get taxi. I mean, all all of it, Amazon.com, all of these things that have opened APIs that you can actually conduct transactions on. So what Siri saw early, they said, to be efficient and to scale, we have to make this a highly efficient parameterized operation. We're going to have to reduce this to this most simple right. form. And 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 they at the end they had it. Uh, a new service would require two to three programmer weeks to bring up a new service. And that's highly efficient, scales very quickly. And you know the platform is there to scale this really through the world's web com you know, e-commerce services very quickly. But just to add to that, because it's not just bringing up the new service that's terribly important. It's also, if you have, I'm a recovering mathematician. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have N. One never recovers from that. <laughs> <laughs> if you have N services, and, they, and each time you bring one up, you have to interface to all the others. You have a very hard problem, n squared problem. So yeah. delegated computing was the ability to bring a new service up. Let's say speech, for example, speech recognition with nuance. And, um, and have it automatically work with all other services, right?